this morning I'm going to show you a few things with our electrical. Now, this is not to badmouth an electrician or a mechanical company. In fact, I'm not even going to say who they were. Um, if you're curious of who we've used as contractors, we do have a website where we have listed some of our contractors. Um, there will obviously be two electricians listed for this reason, but uh, maybe we'll give them a rating of some sort. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through from the main panel just through parts of the house and show you some things that you should look for before you call out your inspector or pay your electrician. The ground rods you see here should be buried in the ground. They should not be sticking up. They should be below grade. It's junk in the bottom of this thing. Not okay. Another thing, you gotta check these wires. This one here pulled right out. It's loose. And I think you can see the other problem with this panel without me pointing it out. The grounds. They didn't have the right size bolt, so they just simply. I don't even know. Whatever this is, absolutely, positively unacceptable. Our electrical did not pass the main panel. Back here, what do we have? Just a random ground wire that is sticking out of the back of the air conditioning unit. Again, not going to pass inspection. And we have our box to our AC units here. And when we follow that through here, through where the wires are coming through the masonry, if you notice, this wire is just rubbing against this metal on the masonry. And it's actually already wearing into the wire itself. This should be sleeved, these should be sleeved. Everything should be sleeved going through the masonry to protect it. This is not going to pass. Up here you can see that wire is um, anchored to the, the studs as it goes through. Now let's just follow this wire. Nothing. For whatever reason they did not anchor this one to anything all the way out. They just let it hang. Only this one is properly anchored. But down here, if you look at that wire, you'll see where the strippers actually cut into the wire. That is not going to pass because uh, it's basically weakened the wire and it's, it's cut the wire. Um, my six-year-old can strip wire without indenting the wire. Um, yeah. This does not pass. This right here is our air conditioning set panel. Um, the other thing that we've uh, run into on these is um, there should be some sort of grease in these fittings um, on all the electrical fittings. It's not. 100% necessary where there's copper, but um, none of our panels were, were uh, the fittings were done using that type of electrical grease. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if you can mix the neutrals in the grounds right here. Uh, these are probably grounds, but this uh, this one here is just a mess. Um, Mainly because these wires were cut as they were stripped, um, so the whole dang thing has to be cut back and rewired. Hopefully, we have enough slack here to get it to work. This is not electrical related, but it's the same company. As you can see here, a broken this corner, this vent cover is broken when they installed it, and. Uh, there's one good reason why this won't pass inspection. Mr. Spider here 
has uh, found a nice little cave back in that hole. So that's going to have to be replaced. Same company, non electrical. But awesome workmanship. Another thing, these lights are great to have. We have them all the way through our crawl space. This is not something the electrician did, but something the electrician was supposed to check. I've installed outlets on each of these. So you can plug something in if you're working underneath the house. There should be a ground fault for that circuit. Um, there's not. This is the main panel inside the house. It is not the main panel to the house. This is the main sub-panel. Um, so with that being said, there's a few problems here. There are absolutely no arc fault breakers in this panel. They're just all standard breakers. Everything in a room where there are gonna be people gathering, sleeping, or doing anything has to have an arc fault protection on it. And the other thing is, the grounds and neutrals are mixed. Um, you cannot have a ground and a neutral sharing the same spot. And you really can't even have the neutrals doubled up. So if the neutral is doubled up, that's also not okay. Um, because this is not the main panel of the house, and it is a sub-panel, the grounds should actually all be on a separate plate than the neutrals. And I'm not meaning a separate plate here and here. This entire ground wire should have been pulled over here and stuck into probably a longer version of this bracket back here that is just one long bar that all the grounds would go into and then the neutrals would have plenty of spaces to go over there without doubling up. Um, so nothing back here is wired correctly. None of this, none of this is wired correctly. It's neat and tidy looking, but neat and tidy doesn't pass if correct, uh, correct work has not been done. The red and black feed wires on this panel should also be reversed. Red should be on right and black on left. This outdoor outlet looks fine, um, but if you plug something into it, nothing's going to happen because there are no wires running to this outlet. It was just, for whatever reason, skipped. So that outdoor outlet is um, what we call a dummy outlet. Uh, because the dummy wired it there. See how they wired in the vent plug um, for the vent over our range. That is self explanatory, unacceptable. There should be an outlet there. Um, there should not be a hole, even if that were okay, that should be fire cocked. I mean, this is just <laughs> unbelievable. Now, we have the dryer uh, hookup over here, and this is the washer hookup. And you would think if this were on its own leg, that it would be fished in from the bottom. Um, seeing how the wire is coming down from the top, I'm guessing that that is jumped off of just a regular service outlet at the top. That doesn't pass code because the, the washing machine itself has to have its own dedicated 20 amp circuit. Now here's a nice bucket full of a bunch of outlets. Um, and I had done the outlets, but the electrician was supposed to check our work. The um, main problem that we have here with these outlets is that, as nice and new as they are, they aren't tamper resistant. And um, apparently, and this is news to me, but the new code in 2015 requires that 
all residential outlets be tamper resistant so um, these outlets won't go to waste. We're going to be building other facilities on the property and uh, we'll want ground fault breakers and we'll want the, the ground fault receptacles. We'll want these receptacles so a lot of these will be able to reuse. Um, there's probably 80 receptacles in this house and I think I probably put in about 20 or 25 of them as tamper resistant just simply because um, we do have little kids. So, um, but in the rooms where I didn't use tamper resistant, they are now in a five gallon bucket. Now, if you can see this, this right here, this is a combination of the drywall guys and people not paying attention when they wire up the outlets, but um, when the drywall cutters come in and cut this out here, a lot of times their cutters will nick up wire. Don't want any of this exposed inside your box. Um, so you got to pull them out further, cut them back, and remove these nicks. Um, that one. That's real bad. Um, so those nicks can't be in the wire. That's going to cause something to arc. Somebody's going to get shocked. Here you can see a little piece right there. Um, it says home run. Um, those were labels that I had labeled on the wires so that uh, we would know which one was the, the home run line. Uh, that's important um, when, you're, when you're wiring this stuff up to make sure that you label everything and you don't remove those labels. In the rooms that I wired, there's a little yellow piece right on the home run on most of them. Um, some of them they were removed somewhere in the process but um, that makes things a lot easier to identify. For the new electricians, I went through the house and I put up some stickers here. It says two switches unused. Um, what happened is we have wires that run through the walls for future wall sconces. Um, for example, on this switch, there'd be a wall sconce on the other side of this wall and then there's actually wire running through the ceiling right in the center there where our island will eventually be. Um, those wires shouldn't have been wired in with the other wires. They should have just been capped off because we're not using them yet. We wanted the wires in the wall before the drywall went up, but we're not using them. We don't want them live. We don't even want them connected in any way whatsoever. They need to be terminated and not attached to the rest of our electrical. Um, so in here, everything had been wired up and attached. So I had gone in and uh, went ahead and installed switches because the switches will be here and we want to be able to put a cover over it. Um, but the switches are each wired into a lighting circuit and only one of these lighting circuits should be live at the moment and that's for our um, can lights in this room. So um, they have to come back in and now test to figure out which ones are in the walls. Um, this is a similar situation in all of our bathrooms, everywhere else. We now have to test where those wires are because uh, we're drywalled in, we can't see them, and they shouldn't have been uh, wired in by the electrician. Um, but that's hopefully uh, an easy trace. So um, and here's another situation where we have a receptacle switch right here and this switch powers part of this receptacle. This receptacle is half switch, half lock. Um, when these were originally stripped during rough and, and wired in, the electrician took off the labels so we couldn't tell which one was the line to the switch and which one was the line to the you know, the, the line feeding it. Um, so we had to come back in here and identify uh, which lines were which and trace them down. Um, so make sure, you know, if you're doing some of your electrical, the electrician's doing some of the electrical, a lot of this is just sloppy electrician work because, they, you know, they would have been wasting time later trying to trace this stuff down. Um, make sure that your labels, when you label things, are being left on when they strip them back like I showed you with that home run wire. You can see on all of these, they're coming back through and relabeling them. 
um, when I wired these, I made a specific point to label all of these. Uh, this is just a dummy move altogether. Um, the sink in this room is just, it's, it's just got a single drain in the center. Um, and it will hang on the wall. So we really don't need two vanity lines off to either side. But um, you definitely shouldn't put water lines right above an outlet. Um, so these water lines are going to be cut and moved by a plumber, um, and we're just going to have one in the center the way it should be. But for right now, uh, this is what it looks like. And, um, it's not going to pass code. Uh, our original electrician was also our plumber. So you can see how this ended up. So right here I am showing you our at-grade receptacle, which they were supposed to install. Um, it's invisible. It's the invisible at-grade um, outlet. It's required by code to have one at-grade. And we have an invisible one. And it has to be a dedicated service outlet. Well, the at grade outlet, I'm not sure if it has to be the dedicated service outlet, but there should be a dedicated service outlet within 25 feet of the air conditioning units. So you may have well just made it the same one, um, but ours is invisible. It's just, it, it's very hard to find. You can believe it, when you don't even make it past the box, the main box, three wires, the electrical inspector is not going to let things fly. When they come back out, they're going to inspect every outlet, they're going to bring three inspectors. They do not trust the electrical in this house, and I don't blame them. If you can't wire up the main panel, you don't belong wiring up the rest of the house. Now luckily, I wired most of the house. I didn't do the main panels, I didn't do the appliances. I didn't do a lot of the things that we showed you today, um, but those were things that we had left in the hands of the electrician and went wrong. So I think we'll be okay on the rest of the house. Needless to say, and justifiably so, we have hired a different electrician to come in and put his license on this project, which means they're going to go through everything that we have done and everything that the electrician has done anyway. And the reason why we're doing that is because our inspector does not trust the work that he sees out here. And we want to gain his trust back because we still want to finish the project on a good note with him. So we're bringing in a whole new electrician and he's going to go through this whole thing top to bottom and fix anything else that he sees. One thing that I didn't mention that uh, you can't really show on the video because it doesn't make any sense if I tried to show it to you, but we should have a 20 amp service outlet on the outside of the house or um, you know, at, at least its own uh, service, and then we should have its own 20 amp service uh, in the attic space of the house where somebody can go if they're servicing the air conditioning or the air handler and plug in their tools and equipment and have their own, um, their own breaker to work off of. Uh, that's for safety reasons. There's, there's a whole lot of reasons for that. We don't have that in this house because nobody ever put it in. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully I pointed some things out to you that you may have not known that you need to check for, but uh, make sure that you see arc fault breakers in your panels. Make sure you see GFCI outlets throughout the house. We got those in, but I put those in. Um, and make sure, make sure that your contractor has wired up your panels correctly, because if you can't make it past your panels, you're gonna fail everywhere else.